69 verse 30. Psalm 69 verse 30. Psalm 69 verse 30. I read, it says, I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm sharing with you this morning on the message I have titled Magnifying God Through Thanksgiving. Magnifying God Through Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very important. As a matter of fact, God demands thanksgiving from us. God demands thanksgiving from us. Luke chapter 17 verse 17. There were ten lepers who were cleansed by Jesus. Ten lepers were healed by Jesus. But the Bible says that only one came back to thank him. So in Luke 17, 17, Jesus said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not ten that were cleansed? But where are the nine? And he said, Where were, were they not, not found to return to give glory to God except this foreigner? Verse 18 is telling us that only one came back to thank him. So that means God demands thanksgiving from us. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in the book of Psalm 100, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. So that means thanksgiving is the code, is the access code that gives us access into the presence of God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. So that means without thanksgiving, you are not permitted to enter into the gates of the Lord. Are you following me? So thanksgiving is vital. Thanksgiving is critical. Enter into his, his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We have to learn to be thankful. I've always said that ungrateful people shall never prosper. So it's important to learn how to give God thanks. So Psalm 69 verse 30, the Bible says, I will praise the name of the Lord with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. That means to be able to magnify God, you have to engage the mystery of thanksgiving. To magnify God, you have to engage the mystery of thanksgiving. That means every time we start thanking God, we begin to magnify him. That's why Psalm 34 verse 3, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. So that means when God does something for you, it's important for you to let the whole world know about it. That's why we testify. You see, the reason why you will not be promoted in the kingdom of God is because you don't understand the mystery of thanksgiving. We don't thank God before he before no we don't thank God after he has done things for us. We thank God before he does things for us. So the Bible says that oh magnify the Lord with me. Oh magnify the Lord with me. That should be your attitude. Every day you must say to people around you, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, for he has done great things for me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So every time we thank God, God is magnified. Every time we glorify God, God is magnified. Hallelujah. 
Psalm 27 from verse 1 to 14. Psalm 27 from verse 1 to 14. Thanksgiving is so critical. Thanksgiving is so important. And we have to understand the importance of thanksgiving. Every believer must learn how to thank God. So David, in the midst of challenges, David said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Amen. They stumbled Amen. and they fell. Amen. Amen. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Glory be to God. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident. That one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Hallelujah. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. Amen. And many of us can attest to this fact that God has hidden us. Amen. Verse 6, he says, And now my head shall be lifted above my enemies all around me. Glory. I don't know what enemies you have, but they, your head will be lifted above their head. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hear, O oh Lord, verse 7, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me Amen. and answer me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Verse 8, it says, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Mm. You have been my help. Amen. Do not leave me nor forsake me. Amen. Hallelujah. When my mother and my father forsook me, mm. then the Lord will take care of me. Glory be to God. Amen. When my mother and my father forsook me, then the Lord will pick me up, other translations say. That means it doesn't matter where you find yourself. When you are forsaken by others, God will pick you up. Amen. Glory be to God. Verse 11, it says, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path. Because of my enemies. Glory be to God. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me. And such as breathe out violence. Glory be to God. Amen. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Verse 14, last verse finally. He says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we magnify God through thanksgiving. We magnify God through thanksgiving. It's important for you to develop an attitude of thanksgiving on a daily basis. That's why the Bible says that in everything, give thanks. Amen. In every situation you find yourself in, you have to learn to give thanks. Not in some things, but in everything, you must give thanks. Hallelujah. In everything. In everything. When you give thanks to God in everything, he begins to lift you up out of that situation. David found himself in the desert of life and he didn't give up. He didn't give up on thanking God. He knew and understood what it meant to magnify God through thanksgiving. 
You see, when you focus on your challenges, your challenges will magnify. But when you focus on God, God will be magnified in your life. So the Bible says, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Don't wait for things to be good before you give thanks. In that situation that you find yourself in, learn to give God thanks. When you learn to thank God, God will make your tongue full. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who thank God, those who thank God, their tongues are always full. So learn to be a grateful Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Finally, as we get ready to close, five things Thanksgiving will bring you out of. Five things Thanksgiving will bring you out of. Number one, Thanksgiving will always bring you out of trouble. Thanksgiving will always bring you out of trouble. That's why David said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. For he has done great things for me. God delivered him out of so many troubles. So, Thanksgiving will always bring you out of trouble. Glory be to God. Thanksgiving will always bring you out of trouble. Number two, Thanksgiving will bring you out of debt. Number two, Thanksgiving will bring you out of debt. I don't know where you find yourself today. You might be in debt. You might have been in, in a very challenging situation. But I want to encourage you to give God thanks. Hallelujah. Don't stop giving God thanks. Continue to give him thanks. Continue to exalt him. Continue to celebrate his goodness. Continue to magnify him. And as you continue to do that, you begin to see his goodness in your life. So thanksgiving brings us out of debt. What situation do you find yourself in? In a situation of debt, learn to thank God. Glory be to God. Learn to thank God. Learn to give him all the glory. Learn to celebrate his goodness. Just begin to thank him. And as you begin to thank him, he will begin to give you strategies how to come out of that debt. As a matter of time, as a matter of fact, sometimes through your thanksgiving, God can cancel that debt supernaturally. So today, engage that mystery. Engage the mystery of thanksgiving. Number three, thanksgiving brings you out of shame. Thanksgiving will bring you out of shame. Thanksgiving will bring you out of shame. You might find yourself in a shameful situation, but learn to thank God. The Bible says that Abraham, Abraham's body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. That was a shameful situation they found themselves in. Philippians, uh, Romans chapter 4, from verse 17 to 20. Romans chapter 4, as a matter of fact, we can look at it from verse 16. And then you begin to see what thanksgiving can do. The Bible says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all their, their seed, not only those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham who is a father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, this is Abraham, who contrary to hope believed in hope so that he became the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he considered not his own body already dead. 
since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. That word giving glory to God means giving thanks to God. Abraham's body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. But in the midst of that shameful situation, they were giving God thanks. They were giving God praise. They were glorifying the name of the Lord. So thanksgiving can bring you out of every form of shame. Every form of shame that you find yourself in today, begin to thank God. Your business is not flourishing, begin to thank God. Your husband is misbehaving, begin to thank God. That's what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, in everything, not in some things, in everything, do what? Give thanks. In everything, in the good, give thanks. In the bad, give thanks. In the ugly, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Jesus was standing at the tomb of Lazarus in John chapter 11. And the Bible says that, And Jesus lifted up his voice and said, Father, I thank you. Oh my God. Lazarus has been dead for four days. Dead for four days. Stinking. The sister said, Lord, by now he's stinking. That's a shameful situation. Lazarus was a God lover. His family was a God lover. As a matter of fact, that, were, that was the, the resting headquarters of Jesus. Jesus always goes to their house to feed. Jesus only always goes to their house to rest. And when they were in a shameful situation, Jesus never showed up for four days. He never showed up. He never showed up. But one thing I love is that when Jesus finally showed up and stood at the tomb of Lazarus, Jesus lifted up his voice and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Glory be to God. He knew, he understood the mystery of thanksgiving. He understood what it means to thank God. See, thanksgiving has the ability to bring anything that has been dead back to life. That's a mystery of thanksgiving. When we started this church many years ago, we're just one, two. We started engaging the mystery of thanksgiving. When one person comes to church, I'll be celebrating and be jumping and be crying and be rolling around like, like a thousand people have come to church. I started giving God thanks. I understood when, when there was no one, when there was empty chairs, I was thanking God. And God started bringing the multitudes, multitudes, multitudes in the church, multitudes online, multitudes everywhere. I learned how to thank God in the midst of that shameful situation. Many people wanted to see me destroyed. They said, oh, the church can never flourish here. Many people will drive past. I saw pastors who will drive past and peep into the, into the congregation and check, and there was nothing. But they didn't know I was engaging the mystery of thanksgiving. I was engaging the mystery of thanksgiving. We were thanking God. My wife and I, every time we go to church, we'll thank God for the multitudes. There was no one. We we'll thank God for the multitudes. We come home, we we'll thank God. We'll kneel down and thank God as if a million people showed up. And God said, oh, now I can trust them. In the midst of the shame, if they knew how to thank me, what will happen when I bring them out of the, this shame? And God started adding multitudes from every corner, from every country, for over 72 countries represented physically in the church we are not talking about the online the online members that by the grace of god that have been reached across the world are you following what i'm saying so thanksgiving can bring you out of shame you are in a situation that looks shameful begin to thank god you are in a situation 
you, you are in, in a sickness, your body causes you, puts you in shame. There's a bad order that continues to put you in shame. Begin to thank God and see if God will not remove that shame away from you. You have been barren for years. People are laughing at you. They say, what kind of God are you serving? Where is your God? Like Martha and Mary, they were saying, where is your God? People were laughing at them. But when Jesus showed up in that situation, in that shameful situation, Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. My prayer for you today is that you learn to engage the mystery of thanksgiving. Number four thing that thanksgiving brings us out of is that thanksgiving brings you out of the pit. Glory be to God. Thanksgiving will bring you out of every pit that you find yourself in. Joseph was in a pit. Joseph was in a horrible pit. Joseph was put in a pit to, destroy, to die. But in the midst of that pit, Joseph was thanking God. Joseph was glorifying God. Joseph was thanking God. As a matter of fact, he understood that if I can thank God in this pit, God will bring me out. Hallelujah. So in the midst of the pit, whilst he was in the pit, with no water, with nothing, he was thanking God. He was glorifying God. Are you in the pit? Are you in the pit of life where there is no life, where there is no water, where there are no resources, where you find yourself uh, stranded? Learn to thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph learned to thank God. And through his thanksgiving, out of the pit, he became a prime minister. Out of the pit, God is bringing someone out today. God is bringing that family out of that pit. That pit that you have found yourself in. You found yourself in a pit of life where nothing seems to be working. As a matter of fact, this coronavirus has made it worse. But in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree that through thanksgiving, yes. you are coming out of that pit Amen. in the name of Jesus. Last but not the least, thanksgiving brings you out of every form of prison. Amen. Thanksgiving brings you out of every form of prison. You know the story already? Joseph was in a prison. But in the prison, Joseph did not give up. In the prison, Joseph was giving thanks. In the prison, Joseph was thanking God. He did not allow the days in the prison, the years in the prison to overwhelm him. In the midst of the prison, he was thanking him, thanking God. That's why the Bible says that in everything, not in some things, in everything, give thanks. In everything. So I am happy healing to you today to learn how to thank God. Learn how to thank God. In the good, learn how to thank God. In the bad, learn how to thank God. The Bible says that for this is the will of God. The will of God for you is to learn to thank him in the midst of every challenge. It says for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. What is the will of God? Thanksgiving is the will of God. So don't stop thanking God. Don't stop thanking God. Don't stop thanking God. In the midst of that situation, thank God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God whether things are good. Thank God things are bad. Learn to thank God. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we bring our message to a close, I want to encourage you to sow your thanksgiving seeds today. Why are we doing that? Because it's biblical, it's scripture. The Bible says that, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. We do it together through acknowledging what he has done for me, what he has done for you, what he has done for me, what he has done for all of us. We are alive today because of his goodness. Hallelujah. 
You are alive today because God has been good to you. Hallelujah. So this morning, as we come to the end of this service, I want to encourage you. Before we even close, I want to lead you to Christ. Some of you are watching for the first time. You're wondering, what is he talking about? Why should I give God thanks when I'm going through a challenge? When I don't know where my next food is coming from? If, when I don't know even if I have a job or not? You thank God and see what he will do. Some of you have not given your life to Christ, so I want to lead you to Christ. You can't experience the kindness of God, the goodness of God, until you are part of his kingdom. Hallelujah. So this morning, wherever you are, I want you to say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I have decided to follow you, Jesus. No turning back. No turning back in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer, you are now born again. You are a child of the Most High God. Your life will never be the same again. Listen, we've got some gifts for you. If you said that prayer sincerely from the depths of your heart, I've got an e-book to send you. Go to our website now, solutionchapel.com dot org www.solutionchapel.org and fill in that form that says salvation amen and as you send it to us we'll respond back to you we'll help you to grow we'll pray with you so that you can become a strong christian in jesus name amen and amen well we've come to the end of the service i want to encourage you uh, you can show your thanksgiving offering throughout the set throughout the day just sit down pause for a moment think about what god has done for you think about what he's brought you through many of us were not expecting to be here now but he has shown us his kindness so i want to encourage you to give out of the depths of what he has done for you in jesus name give generously as the lord has blessed you in jesus name Amen and amen. Well, let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you in the second.